In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to rebuild a complex form using lines and surfaces. So we'll start with this geometry I already built. If I look at my modifier tab we can see that the geometry is a series of modifiers applied to a plane. Um, and I have a mesh smooth on at the end here. <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do is you want to simplify the geometry. So you want to make sure you take off your smooth because otherwise if I add this edit poly you'll see how many lines and points I have so it's just too many to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the edit poly um, turn off my mesh smooth and then that's already a more manageable form. Um, if it helps you can even go back to the primitive geometry so if you're in a boolean you could go into the two operands if you're not, you can just select the initial primitive and reduce the segments. Um, you just want to make sure the form is basically the same, but with as few faces as possible. So that seems pretty good. I can probably even go one, one fewer. Um, so that's a pretty good base. So there's a few ways we can do this. Um, one method is to add an edit poly at the end and then open up the edit poly and then go into the sub objects of the edit poly so that if I select the edge sub object level I can actually start to select some edges on the surface and then I can start to extract a skeleton um, of these edges that I can then restitch and then apply a surface modifier to one way to do this is if you want to select a loop for example I want to select all of them in this row I can select one, hold down shift, and select the next one and it will select the entire loop. Another way is just to manually hold down control and select the edges that you want to extract from this form. And then once you have all the edges you want to select or extract, you can, I'll just select all of them for this example. Um, you then go over to the right where it says create shape, select the settings button, and then you want to make sure you create a linear shape. If you create a smooth shape, then you'll get all these smooth vertices, but we want corner vertices because we'll do the smoothing later with a modifier. So just select linear, OK. And then I'll get out of my sub-object level, right click, hide the geometry, and then you can see I'm left with the frame. Um, if I just select this frame, it's a bunch of splines. So if I open that up, I have vertices, segments, and splines. I can add a surface modifier to these lines and then you can see that it starts to become a little patchy so there's some holes that aren't working. I can toggle this threshold value of the surface modifier and sometimes that'll fix it but not in this case. So let's see what's going on here. I'm going to turn off, off my smooth. Actually I'll keep on my surface and I'll just um, go down to the sub-object level here. I'm going to select this show in result so I can see what's going on. If I then go to vertex or segment, you'll see the spline cage. So we can sort of start to see what the issue is. So if I look on this patch, for example, I have this extra vertice, so I'm creating a five-sided patch there, which doesn't work. Everything has to be either four-sided or three-sided. So to fix that, I can select this vertice. If I delete, it'll delete that vertice. Um, another way to do that is to select, uh, here's another example of that issue, if I select this vertice and I say, um, actually we only remove from an edit poly, so in this case I just want to delete again. And then I can just go through here and start deleting vertices. You know, sometimes I have these moments here where I don't need that much detail, so I can delete that. And then if you ever end up with a situation like this, where they're not touching, you can always select that vertice turn on your snaps. I'm going to right click and make sure my vertex snap option is on. And then I can just snap that to the other vertice and you see it closes the surface. I could also use weld. So if I select two vertices over here on the right I could weld them. As long as they're within that distance of each other they'll snap together and join. Otherwise they won't. But they have to be within that dimension. So that's one way to do it. You could go through and just clean up these vertices until you get your form back. And you know, you might have too many of these edges, so you could delete like whole chunks and just make this one big piece, for example. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and delete that one, unhide my old geometry, and let's look at another technique we can use. 
Um, really what you want to do is make sure you get all the valleys and all the peaks. So for example this is a peak and that's essential to the geometry so you want to make sure that your line cage is going through that peak. Um, obviously this is a valley so you don't need all these vertices but at least a few of the main ones like this one in back would be important. Um, the other thing you want to make sure you get is all the borders. Borders are opening so I'm in my edit poly now and any border is an opening so I don't need all the vertices that define this border but I at least need some of them so I want to extract some vertices from there. And then once you get all the peak vertices and um, edges that connect the peaks and the valleys and the borders, you can then start to stitch that together manually. Make sure when you're adding a surface modifier, you always want to make a four-sided or three-sided surface. Um, so your lines always have to be triangles or quads. The last way is to, if you go into your Create tab and go over to your Helpers, which is the fifth icon over, there's an option to use a point geometry. So a point geometry is, is, is nothing really, it's just an empty geometry, but it's good because you can snap to it. So what you can do, another option, is to go through here and just start adding points at these valleys and peaks. That you think are important for defining this geometry. And I won't go ahead and do all of these, but you know, I'll get some of the important ones. And then if you hide that, you can then start to reconnect them with the line tool. So I'm going to go to the line tool, line, and then I'm going to turn my snaps on, make sure they're on, so they should be highlighted. And then make sure you have pivot selected. Pivot is the only thing that will snap to a point, so make sure you have pivot selected. And then you can just go through here and start to trace your new geometry or your new line cage from these points. And then once you have all those points you can select the lines and you can just start with one. Go to your modify tab and then select attach from the geometry menu and then attach these other lines into the line group and then when you're done deselect attach add a surface modifier and you have a new shape um, after you've added the surface modifier you can add a mesh smooth or a turbo smooth to get the smoothness back and then add an edit poly. So let's look at something here. See how it's really kind of, uh, there's some kinks in the surface? If you go back to the surface modifier, that's because your patch topology, and I'm going to turn this on, it's because your patch topology is set at a very high value. So if you reduce this, it'll become a little smoother. I can increase my iterations on the mesh smooth. So I didn't collect that many points here, but if you are a lot more careful about it, you can obviously get closer to this initial geometry.